Hey guys, so I'm back with a whole new... I don't even think this is a part of my road to irrelevancy videos because some of these people aren't re Some of these people aren't irrelevant. I mean, some of them are and we can get into it, but some of them aren't. Some of them happen to be able to milk this lazy kind of content making. And um, you know what? If you can milk it for all it's worth, then so be it. I mean, who am I to judge, right? I mean, I'm Angelica, so you know, I just judge. Some people manage to make it work and some people manage to not. I think either way, regardless of if you're getting views or not, lazy content making produces more lazy content making because people kind of don't see the point of putting in the effort anymore if there are people that don't put in the effort and still get the views. And I feel like it's just the cycle of lazy content making. Because at the end of the day, there's a minority that actually put effort into their videos, like Shane Dawson. Clearly those videos take a really long time to make. But then there's this whole wave of kind of YouTubers that don't put in the effort because they've seen other YouTubers who don't put in effort make it big and they think, huh, why should I work hard if I can just do the bare minimum and still succeed? It's just such a bad train of thought. We're gonna get into it, so back. Lazy YouTubers. I'm not really going to bring up like specific names in this video. I'm going to put up a lot of... Was that just my hair? Am I going bold? I really am. I really am. I'm going to give examples, but those are not the only examples. If I put up a name that isn't the only person that does this thing, it's just an example, kind of like how Shane Dawson put in examples of sociopathic behavior and a lot of people got really butthurt about it when he compa when he like showed clips of YouTubers while explaining sociopathic behavior, but I think he was just trying to show how the symptoms look in day-to-day -day life. And I'm pretty much going to do the same. I'm just going to pop a few examples here and there, a few clips to kind of illustrate <laughs> what I'm talking about. The main thing that I want to make clear in this whole list, because it's a list, sis, I fit into a few of these categories and or at least I used to fit into some of these categories. So if I am criticizing a certain type of content, it's either because I used to watch it, I understand it or I used to make it. I would not speak on something that I have no clue about i want to make that very clear so if i'm criticizing something at the end of the day i could just be criticizing myself and if you so happen to fit into that category then well done i hope it's working out for you because it didn't for me because i was losing my mind with how lazy that content creation was and then i took a whole year long break and here we are i feel a lot more at ease with the content i'm making because i do a whole lot of planning that the videos i used to make did not require like let me just make that real clear i know what goes into making videos since i started making videos like i know how long it takes what it means to make videos and when i tell you that some of these people don't put in the work they don't put in the work <laughs> and i'm gonna get into it i feel like the main channel that channel the main channels or the genre of videos that i want to talk about is reaction videos i used to make them last year they're still up on my channel because i'm not going to get rid of them it's still a part of the journey to get here and i'm not going to get rid of that reaction channels that is the worst kind of content jmx now nah, he's videos are masterpieces compared to reaction videos well unless he's making reaction videos now because that's what people do when they reach irrelevancy you know a sis is going in today because a sis has had enough the thumbnails they all look the same i don't think i've ever seen a reaction thumbnail that looked different so if anyone ever <laughs> tries to tell someone else that they have stolen their thumbnail or their thumbnail idea. Sis, all it is, is a screenshot of you during the video making some kind of an excited, shocked or annoyed face and then a section of the video that looks enticing and maybe a few emojis. That's it, that's the whole reaction community. And also, if we're gonna talk about theft of content, isn't a reaction video theft? of content your whole video is someone else's video because a lot of you know the diss track reactions was literally just the whole video playing and then you in the background or me because i was in the background as well like a sis is roasting herself right now so realistically the reason why that content is so f lazy to me is because you're literally taking someone's content like you're not taking clips of the content like i would in some videos now as in after i took a 180 u-turn twist to this kind of content you, you can take clips you can take you know a 20 second clip a 10 second clip it's all good all well but for you to take the whole video start to finish put it into your video and act like you're an original creator is just unreal and i don't know how i ever thought that that kind of trash content would run around here but it doesn't i don't think anyone should be proud of making that 
And I wasn't, and any accomplishment just kind of loses value because you gained it through someone else's content by not adding a lot to it. So the first kind of lazy and probably the most lazy content creators on this platform right now are reaction channels. And there are a ton of them and they were very popular like a year to two ago when the whole dish track thing was happening. But they've just kind of, because their channel is built on that, they can't just kind of stop doing that. But I'd rather lose the subs and build my fan base on something a little bit more creative, something a little bit better, something a little bit more good. However, we're gonna compare and contrast to reaction videos that are actually good because there are good reaction channels and I'm gonna express why that is, what the difference is between a bad reaction channel, which is the 99% that do it, and the good reaction channels, which is like the solid 1% that I actually watch. So usually the good reaction channels are the ones that react to movies or TV shows or something because they're not gonna put the whole TV show in, they're gonna have to cut it up. And those people actually pause in between shots and only keep in the parts that they actually reacted to, the ones that they expressed their opinion to. So you could technically say that they have branched themselves out of the reaction video community and they have entered the commentary community where you actually have to gasp and shock comment on things. I know, who would have thought that good content actually requires you to speak? Pretty much it is a duo that react or um, comment on movies. I found them through a Twilight review they did and it was the most hilarious Twilight review I have ever seen because they were watching it and as they were watching it they were commenting on all the funny parts but they cut out a sh ton of the movie and kept in only the parts where they actually had something to say. So pretty much it is a really good commentary duo. And Dylan is in trouble. He's kind of like a reaction channel, but he's more of a commentary channel because he also does the movie things where he reacts to movies. But realistically, he's a commentary channel because he actually comments instead of just reacting. So yeah, reaction videos, absolutely trash deserve to go in the bin the next thing is kind of like it's difficult to explain because people are going to take my word as like the ultimate like yep she just hates all of that content i think it's good if you make it every now and then but some people's channels are just that because they have nothing else to offer like i know that sounds harsh but they have no opinions to share they have no makeup to show they have no gaming to do so they just do this every week for like 10 minutes and one second. People need to take everything I say with a grain of salt. I don't have some kind of vendetta against these people. I don't care if they don't like me and I don't like them. I don't make YouTube videos to necessarily make friends. If I make friends, that's an added bonus. But if I don't, then I have you guys and that's enough for me. So I won't pick and choose who I talk about because, oh, maybe I'll see them at this and this and maybe I'll meet them there and then they won't like me. I don't care <laughs> let's start with that sis um that is the actual piping hot tea so if i need to you know spill a few names that's fine and if they don't like me that's fine <laughs> the kind of videos that i'm talking about is making like quizzes and q and a's and reading my instagram dms the only people that can realistically do that really well are people like cody co and Noel Miller, I think that's his surname. They're like friends and they do like reacting to this and reacting to that. And they're actually a good example of reacting to videos. There we go, that's a good reaction. And you pause the video every like 20 seconds and comment on it. You express an opinion. And a lot of these channels don't do that because they don't have a opinion. That is the thesis. That is actually the thesis. I made a quiz video. I hated every second of that video, but I'm not gonna delete it because it's a part of the journey but i will not do that again <laughs> q and a's are great if you do them every few months maybe every few weeks just to let people know what's up like i think q and a's are fine if they're not the basis of your whole channel like if your whole channel is just one big fat q a then there's something wrong i just have this thing against people just being lazy because i've attempted to make most of these videos and i realize how little effort it takes to make these videos and i just it. Because when I go into this much of a plan for a video and I prepare ideas and I listen to you guys' recommendations and you guys give me so many good ideas for me to then pump out a f***ing quiz is just disrespectful. But I feel like people that watch their channels don't request anything but Q&As because they know that the person won't do anything but a Q&A. So it's like, just do a 
Q&A sis, like fine, we'll watch the 10th Q&A in a row. The next thing I want to talk about is vlogs. There are the lazy, you know, the Zoellas of the world, the Saffron Barkers. I'm not saying that it's lazy content because Saffron Barker actually has a main channel that she posts on in comparison to Zoella who kind of ditched her main channel and is now only doing vlogs. Saffron Barker actually has a main channel on which she has pretty original ideas. Like it's not content necessarily aimed at me. I don't think that I am her target audience, but I don't think her content's necessarily just because content isn't aimed at me and just because I don't necessarily enjoy it doesn't mean it's automatically horrible. I don't like watching people play golf, but some people do. And just because I don't enjoy it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad content. It's just not content for me. In the UK, there's people like Emily Canham. I think that's how you pronounce her surname. She, I know she's got a vlog channel and she's got a main channel. I think the trend in the UK at some point in time was a main channel and a vlog channel, except some people abandoned their main channel, like Alfie Days as well. He abandoned his main channel and he's only doing vlogs. And the vlogs are pretty much just, I have this special thing I'm gonna do, but I can't tell you about it. See you in a year. Cut to the next clip. Oh, I'm just eating dinner. And in a few minutes, I have a meeting about the special project that I can't tell you guys about. Ha ha. People watch it and I use to watch it i used to love those vlogs where people just don't do sh <laughs> like i was like yes zoella give me more clips of you writing your book in a sped up clip oh give it all to me i love that and i think it's fine but i do think it's been done better since then so back then i thought that was like quality content but then when i saw actually well-made vlogs i realized how and lazy that kind of content is as much as I hate him and there's definitely something wrong with him Logan Paul at one point in time before his suicide forest video you could admit to a certain extent that his vlogs were really well done because they were entertaining after all they weren't just oh look at me eat haha <laughs> I'm just having a great time eating and the fact that his audience is a lot older than Jake Paul's meant that his vlogs weren't as obnoxious they were just really well done. And then obviously he turned into a bit of a sociopath, so we're not gonna dwell on him for too long. There's people like Casey Neistat, who pretty much started the quality vlogs, not like the lazy vlogging. I mean, I never watched like a lot of his vlogs, but I've seen bits of them and I know they're really well done and he puts a lot of effort into them. A lot of equipment goes into them. Then there's people like David Dobrik, whose vlogs are more like skits, hidden behind vlogs and they're only four minutes long, well, 420. But they're also really well done because they are more of a skit. A skit is something you have to plan. You know, you don't plan a vlog. Yeah, you plan your day, but you don't plan the vlog. The vlog just kind of goes along with your day. The fact that David Dobrik makes it into a skit means that he had to plan it beforehand, get all his friends together, get all the things that he needs to make that specific vlog, which kind of makes it not a lazy vlog. Then there's people like, I've spoken about her before and I still watch her videos. I think her content is great emma chamberlain i think her content is so good like it's it's a vlog but it's so fast-paced there's no boring bits the editing adds a lot to it to do a good vlog you don't just have to have it an interesting life you have to have an actually interesting personality and i think a lot of vloggers a lot of mainly daily vloggers lack a good personality they just have an interesting life the life of a youtuber is something that intrigues a lot of people your interesting day doesn't make up for your lack of personality Emma Chamberlain has an interesting life, but she also has a very interesting personality which overshadows the interesting life. I don't care what she's doing. She could literally be watching the war and I'd be like, yeah, quality content. Then the last um, section of YouTube that I wanna talk about that's very bland, well, at least was very bland, but it's becoming uh, interesting, but also slightly problematic. So we're gonna get into it, is the beauty community. I'm gonna get more into individual channels for my Road to Irrelevancy series, but I think in between my Road to Irrelevancy, in between my Road to Irrelevancy series, I need other videos because I can't just be making the same again and again. The beauty community is what kind of got me hooked into YouTube and then I realized, I feel like a lot of this realization for me comes from having alternatives and comes from having comparisons. I feel like when you only had the Zoellas doing the everyday makeup tutorial every month, you didn't really complain about it because that's that's all you had, you know? And then the James Charles's came in, the Nikki tutorials, the Jeffree Stars, who do the most complicated looks you have ever seen. Got a lot of very talented people doing very good looks. They brought some fresh air 
into the beauty community and they don't do the same copper smoky eye for every season of the year for all 12 months of the year it's just a big everyday makeup tutorial every beauty youtuber or any other youtuber that wears makeup can do a everyday makeup tutorial because I think everyone likes to see what everyone looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. I've had a lot of requests for an everyday makeup tutorial. But I think an everyday makeup tutorial is good if you make it once or twice or maybe three times. But if your everyday makeup tutorial comes out every month of the year, something is wrong, sis. Like something is seriously wrong, sis. And that is just lazy content making because you know people are gonna click on it because people Google everyday makeup tutorial and they'll click on your new video. And if you post it every month, then every month you'll gain a new audience from people that were searching everyday makeup tutorial and your video popped up that's how views work sis i just cracked it cracked the system the algorithm can suck my and if i'm gonna watch another smoky eye it best come from james charles and not zoella because i'm sick and tired of the same copper smoky eye and a nude lip give me something new sis so with the amount of pr these people get sent to be doing the same everyday makeup tutorial baffles my mind. It boggles my mind. It, my mind is blown, I think. You can't be asked to come up with a good makeup look, practice it, then do it, record it, edit it, and upload it. Because you would rather just film yourself getting ready for your day and call it a autumn everyday makeup look. And then, surprise, surprise, a month later, you are getting ready for another day. So what do you think, huh? Gonna put on my camera. I'm gonna film myself getting ready, but this time I'm gonna put on a red lipstick and call it a Christmas everyday makeup tutorial. But what you're realistically doing is just getting ready for the day and you think, I can kill two birds with one stone. I can get ready for the day and film a video. AdSense and getting ready for the day. Who's gonna complain? Me, because I think it's lazy. The problem I have with these channels is that they lack effort. I think effort is so important in every aspect of your life and if you're not putting effort into what you're doing and you're not trying to better yourself and better your content, then what are you doing on YouTube? <laughs> We're all self-employed. There's no one standing over our heads unless you've got a manager who's telling you what to do. And I think it's up to you to decide if you want to have integrity and make good, original, creative content or if you want to lack integrity and just be lazy and make the same sh week after week after week until you finally lose all your subscribers and with some of these they're doing just fine i mean zoella's losing subscribers but at the end of the day she's made her money the reaction channels they got their views they did what they had to do and they're still some of them are doing fine some of them are gaining like 300 subs a month <laughs> which i don't think is worth it switch it up sis do something else you know the quizzes the q and a's it's all so bland and if your personality is bland the content will be bland i've said this in my shane dawson video i could watch a youtuber watch paint dry as long as their personality is good i don't care so much about the content but a lot of people that decide to make these videos have a really dead personality so if you take a dead personality with dead content you've got double dead and i want to be dead after watching that but if you've got a really good personality and you make a q a every now and then i'm gonna watch it and i'm gonna like that but I just find that a lot of people that make everyday vlogs and reaction videos and quizzes and Q&As, they all lack personality, but they also lack effort. So together that just makes a really sh channel and I'm sick of it. And I'm glad actually that some of those genres are dying out because I think it can be replaced with really good content. Did I say I'm spilling the thesis yet? Because I'm not actually sure if I did. So if I didn't, then I'm hoping that I have spilled the thesis. Subscribe and turn on my notification post notifications because I post videos every Wednesday and Sunday at around 8 p.m. but usually it's closer to 9. But also follow me on Instagram, Snapchat and Twitter because I post on there. It will all be on the screen or in the description down below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.